Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and today I bring you another in the Human Rainbow series using the Friends Forever stamp set, brand new from Pretty Pink Posh. This is also part of the Pretty Pink Posh blog hop, so be sure to click on the link to my blog in the description down below because you will want to go and leave comments on everybody's post to qualify to enter to win a prize because that's always fun on blog hops. The Human Rainbow Initiative is one that I started a few years ago to try to get us all to think in little more diverse terms as we do our coloring for cards. A lot of folks end up doing the same Caucasian combo on everything because they found one combo that worked. Well, let's try something different. Here I'm just trying different light tones mixed with a different mid-tone and a different dark. My dark tones tend to be violets or blue violets just because I think that makes them look more realistic because it's a complementary color and it sometimes looks a little better than browns but it all depends on how much of each one you use you can play around with them and create an infinite variety of different ethnicities on your cards. I would even recommend the next time you get together with all your friends take a group selfie and then when you sit down to color something like this See if you can make each skin tone match. Add a little more yellow to one, a little more peach to another, a little more pink to somebody's cheeks, and see if you can make them different by mimicking people that you know. You know their faces, you know what they look like, and working from a photograph will help to remind you of what kinds of colors you can try. And here I'm just trying different colors, trying different light tones for my base color, different blue violets or violets for my shadows and going over those with a different mid-tone and just testing things out. There is on my blog a free chart you can download in my store and that will help you to start working on collecting some different skin tones. There's also a Copic Jumpstart class that I have put together and you are welcome to take that class. There's a whole lot of testing opportunity in that class. And there are some handouts in there that are very helpful for creating a lot of variety of colorways so that you can see what works best for you. So that's another option for you. Links to everything, of course, are in the doobly-doo to those things as well as the supplies used in this video. So I finished the skin tones and now I'm going to move on to the hair. When you're coloring dark hair, you can actually change the hairdo that's in the stamp set. You have to do it with a dark enough color that you can basically mask or hide or obscure the stamped line. And that doesn't work really well when you're trying to do like say blonde curly hair. That doesn't tend to happen unless you have an outline that you can mask out or a way that you can create something around it to hide that. But with dark hair, look how easy it is to give this little guy some hair that goes very well with his skin tone, some little curly, tight curly hair. I pulled his bangs down further on his face. You can do all kinds of things with dark hair when you're adapting on your stamps this way. I'm gonna do the same thing with this little guy, but I'm just gonna give him more wispy hair. Instead of just having a block of hair, feel free to adapt the edges of it because I'm gonna be using dark colors. Dark colors are going to mask that little line. So there's just the, the part that was already on the stamp. So I'm going to give him a Justin Bieber do. I'm not going to go quite as far as Justin Bieber because you can't even see Justin's face. But <laughs> I'm going to, well, I guess this is maybe Justin Bieber. I'm not sure what year it was when he had the hair hanging down across his face. He might not now. I haven't kept up with him lately. But nonetheless, you can make your stamps work for mimicking someone that you're giving the card to. Imagine the joy that someone would have if you actually adapted a stamp to look like them and sent that to them with a, in a birthday card. They would be so excited that you thought enough of them, you cared enough for them, whether it's friends, family, relatives, that you cared enough to make the card match them or do two people on it. One looks like you and one looks like them. That card will have so much more meaning because of it rather than just having a random person on it. Of course, the message inside a card always means the very most, but the art on the outside can be really special and can really communicate a lot to your loved ones. 
This little girl has very straight hair in the stamp, but I am going to transform that into curly hair. This is something that you can definitely do with any of your stamps. If you have dark hair, as I said, dark hair will work with this, but you can see how regular those lines are. They're very graphical in, in the way that they're drawn, but you can make them transformed into curly ringlets. I'm gonna take the E49, which is the darkest of the brown markers, and I'm gonna go over top of the lines as well as some squigglies in between them. And beware, this is gonna look like a hot mess for a little while, so if you start working on something like this, don't give up too soon, because I'm gonna go over top of those lines and just get lots of curly ringlets in there, even going outside of it to create some softness outside of her head to give her that, that little fringy edge. And put a little bit more in the hair underneath of her ears, because that's where it's gonna be deepest in shadow and go out past the little lines on the bottom even to give her a little bit of little softness out there as well. And then finish off this top side of the head. Now, don't panic because the next step is to take another brown, a mid-tone brown, and just go over it. I'm not scrubbing like crazy. If you scrub like crazy, you'll totally mush out the texture. But a few strokes is enough to pull all that hair together so it feels unified and then leave a little bit of that E44 showing at the top for just a few little highlights peeking through. And if you need to go back in with a darker color again, you can do that after you finish this step. But I think this is gonna work out just perfectly. I'm gonna speed this up now because the important part of the coloring is done. I just wanna show you the transformation of the scene as well. I'm gonna color in their outfits and I started doing some shading but realized when I did do the whole scene, I really don't need all the shading. So if you are going to add something super spectacular, I've said before in videos, focus on what's most important. And the little faces and little hair is very important. And the scene that I'm setting is going to be splashy enough that nobody's going to look and see whether or not I actually finished the shading on all of these little, every little bit of pants, every little bit of shirt and things. So. Just gonna leave that color there for now. You can always go back in later if you feel you need it by the time you're done, but I decided on this one I really didn't. And I drew in in pencil a little bit of an outline, just kind of sketched in some lines for a chalkboard behind them. And then I'm gonna fill in with green that whole back of the chalkboard behind their heads. And a tip for doing a giant flood of color is just to go back and forth in a bunch of different directions over and over again. Fortunately, with a chalkboard, you always have that little bit of chalk residue, so even if it doesn't come out perfect, it still looks very much like a chalkboard because you have that, that little you know, bit of discoloration, that sort of thing where chalkboards don't always come out absolutely perfect when the kids erase them. I added a little bit of color to the wall around and behind them, and then decided I would go in and start to adapt that wood around the frame of the chalkboard because I didn't get it perfectly even and you can obsess over getting it perfectly even or you can do what I did which is just add some shadows and then throw in some texture onto the wood itself. I'm just going to add a little bit of wood grain and then go over that to soften in the same way that I did with the hair. Go over the wood grain with one more mid-tone color to just kind of pull that together. You could outline the the whole chalkboard if you wanted with a black pen, but that seemed to me to be overkill. The color is a little washed out here, but I really wanted that black on the children, the black outlines to pop and to pull forward, so I didn't want to really worry too much about having all that detail drawn in black in the background itself. For the ground beneath them, I just drew with a very light pen. I just drew some lines so that I could have my my grid for the flooring and then color that in with a dark gray marker and keep it kind of simple that way in terms of giving a whole scene to this and finishing it off by adding a stamp sentiment that I embossed and then the other the little hearts I just put them in the chalk ink so that they would sort of be softer in comparison to the words. And then that come out cute. I hope you enjoyed this. I certainly enjoyed making it for you. Please do, do 
join the blog hop click on the link down below in order to do that the links for all the other things i've talked about are down below as well as a few on screen click on my face to subscribe and i will see you guys next time bye bye